Celebrating Black History on Wish TV. Presented by Indiana Funeral Care, INHP, and Heaven on Earth. Well, black businesses have had quite a journey throughout the Indianapolis history. Uh, from housing the first female and black millionaire to having a black business downtown to, to then welcoming black back. Their legacies are a key part of black history. News 8's Alexis Rogers explores a bit of her own family history as a reflection of the plight of black businesses and the legacies that have been created here in the city. Well, since coming to Indianapolis, I've been fascinated by the city's history and the people that make it so great and the stories that create what we see today. It's also been a personal journey, learning more about my own roots that's not only impacted us all, but sheds light on the culture of black businesses here in Indy. It's been a while since many families have gotten a chance to get together, but I learned that's normally when the most gems are shared. There's a certain warmth that comes with spending time with family. Entertainment Ebony Magazine, you know, that's like the, a big deal. Everybody has that person in their family who keeps track of the legacy. That's my cousin Milton. I was nine years old and my brother Harold, who you know, he's uh, 11 years my senior. Legacy is big in the Circle City, especially for black owned business owners. In the late 1800s, there was a cultural shift in racial demographics in the city. Black neighbors made up one third of the population. Black entrepreneurs opened businesses on every corner. Thompson's dad and uncle worked hard to build a franchise. There was another migration in the 1900s. I started the business, owned the business, ran the business. Creating family legacies like mine. He had worked in the form company there in, in Illinois. And when he learned that they had a franchise available through their form company, they said, what's the territory that's available? Said, There's one in Indianapolis. My dad said, let's go. In the late 50s, the unit step company of Indianapolis was born. Southeastern Avenue was not too far from uh, Greenfield, Indiana, which uh, right down now where the interstate system uh, connects you easily. Uh, it was uh, really known as the home of the Ku Klux Klan. And, uh, and my dad um, put on the first place he could rent on the southeast side, and he rented that facility to put his, his, his company in. Dad would always be out in his work shirt, and these are some of the employees that he had. Black entrepreneurs owning what would equate now to a million dollar business wasn't common. It provided a chance to get closer to the American dream. A lot of times they were unemployable otherwise, but by the day it became, it became uh, uh, very worthy uh, employees and loyal employees. For long this new corporate years. culture came with daily gut checks. When folks would come there, uh, he was quite uh, wary of those folks and uh, they would say, well, where the boss at? And my dad would humbly reply, well, the boss is in Florida, so let's get on with business. What do you want from me? You know, and they would say, well, how much is that step? And I said, well, you know, that step's how much. He says, well, who do I write the check out to? My dad, again, being skeptical and wanting to make sure, he says, well, what's a check? Um, so if you can produce cash and we, we got a deal and I'll make sure you get your step and we'll get it delivered to wherever it is you want it delivered. Enduring painful humility uh, I mean, for a longer very, term very game. Serious. Just early on, just the business acumen he did and the kind of self-sacrifice that he made to even deny himself of the own ownership of his own business. Painful humility, self-sacrifice, these were all the necessary ills to keep moving forward. Legacy requires an imprint. My dad's resistance was, how do we get more education and how do we create more opportunities? And how do we uh, chase the capitalistic side of what our opportunities are and not to think about tearing them down or burning them down? For the Thompsons, that became providing the custom-made steps for the place the Indianapolis Colts called home for 24 seasons, the Hoosier Dome. Hoosier Dome was a, kind of a first-time deal, but to actually have contractors that go in there and actually put their products in there. Project after project came. A community was created, and in decades to come, other businesses arose. The Grand Slam companies, the sports ventures businesses, the, uh, I was general counsel for the Pan American Games, which led to a lot of international businesses, and uh, a cloisonné business that uh, had international distribution, licenses that were at, uh, uh, for the NFL and the NBA and Major League Baseball and the, the Beatles and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, and Gibson Guitar. We can go on and on with, uh, with those commodities and how we would sell them and make them work. The thing about After legacy is that it's here, even when we're not. We imploded it and we got a piece of those steps and we took it out to my dad's uh, uh, gravesite out there at the Crown Hill Cemetery. A testament that each one of us has the ability to impact the future. Not afraid to do it. You could, you could, you could cower in fear or you can take 
the opportunities and make the best of it and then pay it forward, pass it on. Each generation. It is looking at those who have gone before you. Has a necessary flame. In a family and saying, we can do this. Of its own. There were other notable household names that really broke barriers for black businesses here in Indianapolis. Companies like Mays Chemicals, businessmen like Henry Bundles, the longtime president of the Center for Leadership Development, and Dr. Frank Lloyd, just to name a few. It's a rich history that has manifested to so many businesses and resources like the Urban League and Indy Black Chamber of Commerce to keep those legacies alive. Alexis Rogers, Wish TV, wishtv.com and follow us on Facebook.